Today I've got a nice differential equation to explore. So we're going to look at the differential equation y equals y prime plus y double prime plus y triple prime plus y quadruple prime and so on and so forth. So it's this infinite sum on the right hand side. And we're going to solve this two different ways. We're going to do a straightforward solution first, then we're going to do a bit of a sketchy solution. And after all that's done, I'm going to leave you with two things. One is like a question pertaining to the number of solutions of this differential equation, and another is like a slight generalization of this type of differential equation. And I think both of these things are fairly interesting. Okay, so let's get started with our straightforward solution. So I'm going to maybe copy this differential equation over here. And I'm going to make the following nice observation. I can take this right hand side and rewrite it as y prime plus the derivative with respect to x of y prime plus y double prime plus y triple prime plus dot dot dot. And that's of course because the derivative with respect to x of y prime is y double prime. The derivative with respect to x of y double prime is y triple prime and so on and so forth. Okay, nice. But now by our original differential equation that says that y is the sum of all of its derivatives, we know that this stuff within the parentheses is in fact just y itself. So again, that's just using the given differential equation. So recopying this, we have y equals y prime plus the derivative of y, which itself is y prime. So plus y prime. And this first y prime is just brought down, whereas this second y prime is done by that substitution. But let's notice that tells us that we have y prime equals one half y. So maybe my favorite way to solve this is just to look through all of the functions that you know in your head and think of one that when you take its derivative, you don't end up with exactly the same function. You, you end up with half times the function you started with. And you'll immediately realize that the solution to this will be an exponential and we'll get y equals e to the one half x or x over two. But in fact, we could take any constant multiple of that. So I'll write a c here because that'll also satisfy the above differential equation. Okay, so there we have it. We have a solution to our goal differential equation. In fact, we have an infinite family of solutions, but it's a one dimensional family. Maybe we should point out that here C may be any real number. Okay, so that was fairly quick, but as promised, what I'm gonna do now is solve this a different way, which is a little bit sketchy, so we used a fairly straightforward method to get the following one dimensional family of solutions. We have y is c times e to the x over two. Now we're gonna gain these solutions another way. Well actually we'll in fact gain that previous differential equation. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce some notation. So I'll set d of y equal to y prime. So in other words, this d is our derivative operator. Okay, and now I'll rewrite our differential equation using this derivative operator. So let's just note that d to the n power operating on y is the nth derivative of y. Okay, so that means we can rewrite our differential equation as y equals the sum as n goes from one up to infinity of dny. So just rewrote that in uh, summation notation. But now I'll factor the y out of the right hand side. It's not really factoring because really these are operators acting on y, but I think the language there is okay. So that leaves us with the sum 
as n goes from one up to infinity of dn operating on y. So this stuff that I'm putting this purple box around is a sum of these linear operators. So you can think about these as linear transformations on a vector space of differentiable functions. But what do we have there? We've got a geometric series. So maybe we'll apply a geometric series summation formula to this. And that'll leave us with the starting term D over one minus the common ratio. So one minus D. So now we have this crazy operator like this, D over one minus D on the function Y. Okay. But now from here, I'll operate both sides of this equation by the operator one minus D. So that'll like clear the one minus D in the denominator. I guess I should say that what I mean by one minus D in the denominator, I really mean the inverse operator. Okay, so anyway, that'll give us the operator one minus D acting on Y is equal to D acting on Y. Again, that's just from operating on both sides of this equation by that one minus D operator. But notice that leaves us with Y minus Y prime equals Y prime. The identity operator on Y is just Y, D of Y is Y prime and so on and so forth. But that immediately gains the differential equation y prime equals one half y, which we had on the previous board, which led to this solution. So now let's maybe talk about a follow-up question here. So question. So we know that if we were to cut this off, so if we cut this thing off and we have y equals y prime plus y double prime all the way up to the nth derivative and then don't go further, then there are exactly n linearly independent solutions to this differential equation. So let's write that. So y equals maybe c1 y1 all the way up to cn yn where the CIs are real numbers and the YIs are linearly independent functions. So the question to you, which I don't immediately know the answer to, is why when we truncate this right-hand side to a polynomial, do we get N linearly independent solutions, whereas when we have an infinite sum on the right-hand side, we get a single solution. It almost feels like we should have an infinite family of solutions instead of this single solution. And we maybe do, but perhaps all of the other solutions are maybe functions that are not as nice. So maybe post in the comments if you know the answer to this question. So I'll leave you with a follow-up to this problem. So here's a bit of a follow-up question. So what if instead of having y equals y prime plus y double prime, so on and so forth, what if we take this equal sign and just put it somewhere else? So what I mean by that is look at something like this or something like this. So we keep all of these functions in the same order, but we just change where the equal sign is. So what about y plus y prime equals y double prime plus y triple prime plus y quadruple prime and so on and so forth. Or what about y plus y prime plus y double prime equals y triple prime, quadruple prime, quintuple prime, so on and so forth. Or what about the most general one of these, which would be something like y plus y prime all the way up to the nth derivative equals the n plus first derivative plus the n plus second derivative, and so on and so forth. So is there a nice solution to this like very general differential equation down here? I'm not sure if there is or not. I think probably this first one can be solved fairly quickly just by noticing that this right hand side is exactly the second derivative of the left hand side using something fairly similar to our first strategy. So like I said, this is the second derivative of the left-hand side. The left-hand side is y plus y prime. 
So that would give us something like y plus y prime equals y double prime plus y triple prime. And I think you could probably solve that without too much difficulty, but I think it probably gets pretty tricky as we move forward. So I've done other problems on the channel related to solving nice differential equations. There should be one on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out, and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.